it's not just pure music that is driven by work. It's a combination of music and community and also the left brain thinking uh, skills that uh, really have been groomed um, thanks to my background in uh, education and also the association with my peers over all these years and all that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, How would you describe yourself in three words? Foodie. Uh, nala sabre. I love tea and uh, I love stories. Hello mm-hmm. friends. We are on a new episode and with a new guest on Chapla Chitra season two. I hope you're all well. My guest today is a visionary. He is an internationally renowned musician, scholar, composer, known for his pioneering musical collaborations of both Indian and American choral music. He is an Indian American musician based out of Cincinnati, Ohio from the US, who is greatly recognized in the global music fraternity for his groundbreaking collaborations and celebrating and championing change, fostering diversity and commitment to music education, Dr. Kanik Skanikeshwaran. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome you and speak to you today. Welcome to Chat for Chitra season two. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the warm uh, and kind words. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. You have a very impressive background in engineering and also that too from one of the prestigious institutions uh, in India. I'd like to know how you have found your engineering background Mm -hmm. at the Indian Institute of Technology Mm -hmm. in Chennai and further postgrad studies. How have they helped you to reach the position that you are today? I graduated in 1984. When we look back at where everybody is, there's people that have achieved phenomenal things. Like I feel proud to be surrounded by um, such a group of people that have uh, really contributed a lot to humanity as such. When we interact with them, we exchange notes on what we have done, and there's a mutual admira- admiration for what each of us has contributed. And uh, when we, um, when I think of the work that has been that we have done in the field of uh, building, well, it's not really field; it happened that way. Build, building a community around music and uh, finding commonalities across traditions and uh, finding common ground to work with. And uh, um, finding effective means to take the message out and all that kind of stuff. I think it's not just pure music that is driven by work. It's a combination of music and community and also the left brain thinking uh, skills that uh, really have been groomed um, thanks to my background in uh, education and also the association with my peers over all these years and all that stuff, you know. Mm I feel that, you know, being in with a, such mm-hmm. an inspiring peer group mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. is what has come a long way, both in music as well as in education. So you, you've you opened up uh, uh, lots of uh, avenues and opportunities for so many mm-hmm. musicians and not just musicians, but also to the community at large, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, Yeah, you, you put it, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's not just musicians, but it's, all, it's also community members who are, interested in singing who may not have had the opportunity to excel in music in their lifetimes along in in uh, uh, in partnership with uh, professional orchestras in pro- in partnership with academia dancers yeah. and uh, other artists as well you are mm-hmm. deeply rooted in indian classical music now connecting communities through music is what you firmly believe, which I understand from again your mm-hmm. projects and your musical achievements so far. What actually prompted you to take this path? See, I learned Carnatic music when I was a child, when I was in middle school, when I was in middle school, when I was in high school. Right. The way it started was uh, I saw my chittis learning the veena, and when they used to play the basic exercises and the gitams, they were actually registering in my head as swaras so oh. so they they actually pushed me to go meet their teacher and that's how she said you have to you, you need to learn music formally that's how the whole thing started when i was like nine years old or something like that so it was funny i still remember going there for the first time and singing uh the good bad and ugly the theme song from uh a west one of the western themes in swaras and everybody laughed and said yeah you you need to um, formally learned Carnatic music. Yeah, that's, so that's how it started. 
much of my vocabulary, much of my repertoire was in uh, Dikshitar Kritis. Right. Once, okay. uh, once I went to IIT, uh, there was the natural thing of listening to concerts at CLT and also uh, uh, participating in inter inter hostel inter inter college competitions, oh, th things like that. When I came here, one of the things that stuck me was the, the I started watching concerts here of uh, Baroque music and other um, Western classical forms. The thing that struck me was the in, the amount of discipline in a concert, the the way the people are dressed, the way the the bow movements are uniform, the, the culture of audience discipline. I mean, it's a it's a different setup altogether. Sitting in a, on sitting in a in an informal well, I, it's not really informal, but sitting on the floor listening to Carnatic music and actively enjoying it and discussing it with uh, the rest of the audiences. Oh, in Aranga, in the Swaram Pramada, that, this and all that. You don't see that in Western music. So one of the things that stuck me was, what would it be if our raga structure could be heard in the concert setting? Now, right. granted that I had listened to a lot of Vilay Raja during my college years and all that, he had already done, um, composed some fantastic interludes in between compositions, which were based on the scales of of ragas and all that and i i wanted to see see a lot of i began to hear those in my head and i wanted to actually see those and then let's say okay let me get started with an album the first album i did was uh, based on arvar pasurams oh, i nice. yeah i taught myself midi sequencing and uh, bought a few synthesizers and things and actually started enjoying the process mm. figured out that I, I could actually orchestrate stuff sitting in a spot and then one of my friends said, Connix, you're doing, you, you're thinking differently when it comes to music. Why don't you start a choir and work with people? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, why don't we do it? And then I, we spread the word around and one day some 10 people gathered at home. And uh, I just, for just for that evening, I made up a tune and then we kind of sang that in harmony and all that. And it really turned out well. And, and so one thing led to another and we planned on a choir concert for the first time in 1994. So for about six months or so, uh, 20 of our friends, all young people in the 20s, would come in a lounge. We lived in an apartment complex. We would meet in a lounge every night. People would come after dinner. We would practice. We all graduated from a set of people that have, had had a little bit of formal training in Carnatic music, maybe up to Alankaram, maybe up to Varnam or something like oh. that. And then maybe not even that, but had a good year for music. From that to a group that could sing flawlessly a set mm -hmm. of uh, compositions for about 45 minutes. Yeah. And then without looking at anything, it, everything is memorized. Because ours is a tradition which memorizes. It's We learn by, it's Shruti, right? We had a concert. The concert was house school. Mm -hmm. There was other dances and other in instruments played along with it, which I had orchestrated. And then um, that was, that really opened a lot of doors actually. That we saw, we shared a video of that concert to a friend of mine who's a choir director, and she was completely blown away. How did how did he do it? These are people who haven't had formal training in music, and they don't read music. And how did he get them to sing? So that was a question. And then then she said, "Can you collaborate with us?" I said, "Who's us?" And she said, "It's a church choir. Let's mm. work together. If you're open to working together." This was back in 1996. Wow. So we worked together, and we discovered a common theme that was of interest to all of us at that time. Mm -hmm. um, we were all committed to the environment. Everybody wants to make a difference to the environment in some way, shape, or form. And sadly, I think there was more more of that awareness in 1996 than there is now. Um, so that so at that time, we got people from the Indian community together with singers from the church. And mm. for the first time, I actually wrote out a score in the Western staff notation, and then combined ideas uh, which could be handled by both the groups, like with simple scales like that of Nagaswarali, mm. Mohanam, and some complex ones like Nasika Bhushani and all that. Uh, but it worked um, because from the Western standpoint, they could sing anything that was written yeah. without gamakam, of course. And mm. from the Indian standpoint, they would we would still rehearse every night mm. and uh, mm. get the music together. And when the two groups merged, it was magical. I don't know how it happened. Um, so we ha you have the Indian voices singing uh, the lead melodies, and you have the soprano voices um, giving the... Uh, I, I, of course, I would uh, heard everything in my head mentally and wrote written it down. And then you hear the high notes about that, then you have the basses here and all that. The combination of that was electric. And then I had it choreographed with ballet dancers and other... Um, some Indian dances, Garba and other things and all. And together we showed the story of life on earth 
from its origins to what happened during the industrial revolution and what kind of a future is it that we can create for all of humanity through music through working together and all that and at the end of that we were in a daze how did this happen I'm how sure. did you pull it off and all that and so that is how the whole choral journey started and then after 9/11 this good friend of mine dr katherine roma she called me for coffee one day still remember that afternoon we w- went to downtown cincinnati in starbucks and was it starbucks yeah and just talked about it and said we need to do something together and then he said then i said i have a dream of uh, a concert which would portray 5000 years of indian his- cultural history right then mm-hmm. uh, she said what would be the central message be i said the central message would be that of oneness yeah. oneness without the concept of the other then she said do it but please please make sure that you do it you don't do it without us so oh, oh that's my. how the partnership s- started and then i said okay i'm imagining 100 indian singers so literally knocked on doors to get singers to come and sing and she was able to rec- re- recruit like 40 or 50 singers and together when we re- met and rehearsed for the first time mm. it was just magical so i think one after the other led to you know it's an amalgamation of cultures of yes. know, different styles and genre of music and mm-hmm. as you said it rightly this um, not just um, you have redefined the music in a you know in a way that 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 can be easily accessible or approachable by any person it need not be yes. just the indians alone but it's mm-hmm. you opened up with you know to the to the community and uh, definitely a yeah. music for for everybody so that is a, an amazing uh, achievement uh, if i may say so well, um, thank you thank you you had the vision you had that vision in you and uh, perhaps uh, you know that those uh, impromptu sessions in, mm-hmm. in your house which just started uh, you know in a very humble way um, because to compose uh, music and uh, you know around the 1990s uh, in that mm-hmm. uh, phase perhaps yeah. you must be one of the the foremost uh, indian musicians who have uh, uh, amalgamated you know different cultures through music um, uh, you know during that time maybe you might be uh, you might you might be the only musician or you might stand out there i don't know yeah probably and there was no platform outside of us if you know what i'm meaning ah, uh, what i'm saying because there was right. no place where we could say where somebody could say come and bring your choir and perform yeah. so we literally built the audiences here in cincinnati so yeah. just imagine explaining a choir concert to people when it did not exist before and yeah. uh, the tickets were free of course and then but people had to sign up and suddenly there were 500 and 50 reservations and there was still more people wanting so we said okay let's have a second show right next to it back to back two shows and that way we, we were able to get about a thousand people to see it one night that was exactly. that was how i mean i get goosebumps thinking of it it's not the same anymore it's it's very different because you can communicate whatsapp is there yeah. um, you just have to put it in advanced so much yeah. since uh, those times Right. yeah you know and even uh, the way how we think has also changed in you know, right. it is totally changed the totally changed. So. The, the very fact that we are chatting on zoom right now this is yeah. impossible like uh, but even 10 years ago maybe yeah, yeah. true true very mm. true having a background in carnatic music what is mm. it that fascinated about you towards shri muthu swami dikshit much of what i learned as a child was uh, dikshit's compositions my teacher saraswati ammal is a daughter of uh, kalida kuruchi anandakrishna iyer who learned from ambi dikshit who is oh. a son of uh, subrama dikshit who is a nephew of muthu swami dikshit so naturally the repertoire was around dikshit's compositions and most of the krithis we we learned were the kutti krithis the small ones with just with the anupallavi which used to be referred to as samashti charanam in those days yeah. ஸ்ரீ குரு ஊஹத்தாரைய சுமாம் ஓர் ஸ்ரீ கணநாதம் பஜரே ஓர் அனந்த பாலகிருஷ்ண மாம திங்ஸ் லைக் தட் யூனோ ஸோ நீ லேர்ன் கிரிதிஸ் லைக் தட் தே ஆர் ஈஸி டு லேர்ன் யூ டோன்ட் ஃபர்கெட் தெம் இன் திஸ் த சம் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ரக்சரல் குவாலிட்டி அபவுட் தெம் வித் லிரிக்ஸ் லிரிக்ஸ் ஆர் ஆல்சோ யூ நோ வித் இன் ஹாஃப் அன் ஹவர் தனம் ஃபி ஃப்ரேசஸ் அ கண்டெயின் தே டோன்ட் ஸ்பில் அக்ராஸ் ஹாஃப் ஹவர் தனம் தே டோன்ட் ஸ்பில் அக்ராஸ் ஃபுல் ஹவர் தனம்ஸ் ஆர் எனி எனி திங் லைக் தட் ஸோ வி கட் i got kind of used to that and started actually liking it but until and what they used to tell at home was why is your teacher not teaching you these long tyagaraja compositions why are you just learning these compositions i said okay. well as a child you don't have a choice you just learn what is being taught yeah. to you but and 
I didn't think any more beyond that. So mm. if uh, I remember I think mm. you've done an album exclusively on Adiksha that's a notice for us. I mean there that was is a, correct. I came to know about you. So since then Okay. Yeah, yeah that is fascinated. That is another aspect of the story. See, my party used to play the veena and uh, her father that is my kolu tata he used to play the fiddle. He never oh. called it the violin, he just called it the fiddle and together they used to play these notes at home. Mm-hmm. and uh, to them it is it is not Shakti Shakti oh, right. okay because my Kolu Tata had listened to it directly from bands and he had taught them to my party and they used to play it together then in learning music from my teacher I learned I realized that okay one of the tunes that party plays is the same as Shakti Sahita and one is the same as Santa Thampahi Mom so and then I realized that uh, there were more there were some in teachers collection which is not which were not in parties there was some in parties collection which were not in teachers so the little mind of a six-year-old no a seven eight-year-old tells this kid um, oh there is probably may, many more that we don't know about mm. so that was uh, I remember actually thinking about that um, that uh, yeah so that I mean that was a natural flow of thought right and then in the year 2000, um, when my daughter was growing up, my daughter was five, first older daughter was five years old. I was looking for compositions to teach her. Then I bought myself this, myself this blue book of uh, TK, TK Govindra, which had a complete list of all the Ikshitar compositions. And I was going through Shankara Pranam and found a whole number of these kuti kuti compositions, which did not have a structure. So when I went through it, so five of them were known to me already, like, you know, the Santata Pahi Mom and all that, and even two more, Vande Meenakshi and Hey Maya and things like that. But there were more. So I started teaching those to my daughter and she really loved them. Hmm. Before I realized that she had learned all, all of the uh, notice for ideas from me. Hmm. And to the, come 2007, when she was uh, in middle school, high school, um, we said, okay, let's uh, try to record these. So I started, I needed, needed a compliment, right? So I reached out to some musicians in Cincinnati whom I knew. Mm. And when they heard these tunes, they mm. said, oh my God, where did you get these tunes from? These are our tunes. So there's this Irish musician who said, okay, I know this song. And there's this uh, Hammer Dulcima player who said, I know this song. So before I realized it, it's like I was sitting on top of a story, literally <laughs> like as to where these tunes came from and how mm. They transformed here and there and all that. So in 2007, I gave a leg dem at the music Madras Music Academy, which incidentally won the best paper um, award that year. Um, and then in 2007 and 2000, no, 2008 is when we released this album of these 39 Notice for Asahitiyas of Dikshitar. Um, but then Notice for Asahitiyas is not are not just the only aspect of Dikshitar. There's a way there's way more to it, right? So the way he has traveled around, the way he could. Uh, his music relates to temples and how even as a college during my college days and during my visit back to India days when you visit a temple and when you see a devata there and you see, mm. you're able to correlate that with the composition of Dikshita yeah. it is a feeling of exhilaration and that was not the first time as a college even in school when I was learning the composition Maragata Valli uh, Manasas Marami. So, uh, I mean, it's not in Subrahma Dikshitar's collection, but it's generally spoken of as a Dikshitar composition. Mm-hmm. There's a temple in Paris Corner where uh, it's Malikeshwarar and Maragata Valli. And I, as a kid, I don't know how this thought even struck me. Did Was this composition made here? So, oh. as a school kid, you think, if, yeah. the, if the power of the composition is such that if it makes you think like that, Absolutely. then... And yeah, then I remember visiting uh, Madurai Meenakshi Temple during Navaratri in 1974, I think, mm-hmm. when uh, um, mm-hmm. MLV was singing. We were standing in a line and that was coming in the background, Madura Puri Nilaya, that this. So I didn't know that composition. All I knew was Gamaka Kriya. Because even while learning Bhavayami Raghuramam, our teacher used to refer to Panarottama Sahita not as poor Purvikalyani, but as Gamaka Kriya. Mm, mm. So, Adamari, a lot of correlations here and there, right? So, that is how the Dikshitar, uh, literally the entrenchment in ideas of Dikshitar happened over a period of time. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, his it, it uh, is. <laughs> profound, uh, lyrics. I also believe that, you know, there are most of Dikshitar's Kritis, uh, they mm-hmm. have uh, a lot of uh, 
power or vibration if i may oh, say so right definitely definitely yes yeah this is something that i have always wanted to to ask you and uh, you know as rather curious so that's good mm. yeah so you are a musician and a composer as well mm -hmm. so how important it is um, for you to establish this relationship between the composer and the audience during your performance i think swami dayananda saraswati used to say that without the sishya there is no guru <laughs> so uh, similarly without an audience what what are we creating creating something for so i i mean the the closest person in the audience to me would mm. be myself myself if i create something for the sheer joy of it if some idea comes a combination of and again compositions are in so many different forms right one is where you actually create the text and the music at the same time mm -hmm. which which i have done in many different instances so if a combination of a, a line hits your head and then you write it down then you sing it and you listen to it and it gives you some kind of a satis satisfaction so that that is one thing and then if i know that i'm actually creating something for an audience like uh, in 2019 i was um, given the charge of creating uh, a symphonic work um, which i named muras for the world tamil conference right so about it, it was very it was very clear that uh, the whole thing had to be it was a tamil work and it had to play to the listening of the audience and mm. so the key thing was how to touch move and inspire the audience so that is the goal right through but when you actually get into the create creative process it just comes with the flow because if your intention is that if your sankalpa is that and that is how it that is how it emerges uh -huh. but then there's a lot of others like um, the eka vimshati ragamala which i composed during the pandemic mm -hmm. so there was something um, that the way that happened was in india they declared like a 21 day lockdown and a lot of things happened in the, around the number 21 so the number 21 was resonating in my head and they said okay we need to do something special related to the number 21 mm -hmm. so the the word for so i said okay let's create a 21 ragamalika so okay. uh, obviously the source of inspiration is dikshit that there's nobody else and then we it has to reach it has whoever is listening to it should be able to relate to it it cannot be something very dry but for that to happen i should be able to relate to it first yeah. um so the theme at that time was covid right and you pray to um divinity for uh, relief from the pandemic at that point in time you pray to the divinity in the form of shri vaidyanatha mm -hmm. so shri vaidyanatham bhaje ham bhaje ham ek vimshati ragamala bhushanam uh, sada shiva manisham so adamari so it's in raga shri the opening ragam is uh, shri wow. then then it, because it's vaidyanatha the consort is uh, balambika balambika sametam aparam ameyam adamari so that's a hindustani raga shri So then the third raga then third raga has to relate to vaidyanatha again so it's was in raga shruti um uh, no vasanta and uh, the ramachandram and all the all um mm. uh shadavana narchita and mari varu so basically it's a pullirku veluroda stala purana then the fourth one is uh, in shruti mm. in honor of angaraka who is enshrined there the four ragas in the pallavi the next five ragas is, are about the panchaling kshetras Mm. four plus five is nine and then there's 12 left mm. naturally the 12 will go to the 12 jyotir lingas oh. so oh. that is how that composition emerged it's out and out inspired by dikshit that every raga has a raga name embedded into the sahitya and it's a long um 21 raga uh malika so that when i wrote it it was not going to get performed in front of any audience or anything mm. like that but still the feeling that okay how will somebody be able to relate to it how yeah. can somebody be touched by it how can somebody be inspired by it how can somebody be moved by it so that was a amazing isn't it so when uh, you have actually referenced dikshita skrutis and mm -hmm. you have composed mm -hmm. you have penned down your own yeah. uh, composition to that that is truly fascinating because uh, unless and until you really have a proper vision of... and there's a lot of grace that is associated with that when you write it and the the the, the sankalpa and the if there's a grace flowing then the rest of the composition flows so amazing 
music mm. composing has a focus on so mm -hmm. many things yeah right but also the comprehensive nature of what you are doing to help singers the choirs mm -hmm. and the artists mm -hmm. is to essentially not just to train and redefine their music but also to expand it in such a way that they have a greater understanding of uh, who they are and what they need to be in order to make the music as meaningful and as significant as possible. Now, I've, I've happened to uh, read and also watch uh, on mm -hmm. YouTube about mm -hmm. this amazing choir. I would love to hear from you about the process by which you developed this understanding of music amongst musicians from different genres and how you chose to take this understanding and interpret this for all these uh, singers, choirs and artists through your groundbreaking ensemble Shanti. Um, that's a powerful exposition of what we, I think you've articulated what we're trying to do better than I can articulate. I've gotten this feedback from people that the rehearsals are even better than the actual concerts. Oh. Yeah. So especially the beginning rehearsals, which are much more intimate where, uh, uh, a few years ago, we had a smaller group of people where we rehearsed uh, for a choir concert based on uh, Tirupugar. Uh -huh. So we used to rehearse at my home and we had like, what, 30 people come every Sunday. And then so when you rehearse the music, it's not just the music. It's about enjoying every uh, every word of the composition. See, to me, ly lyrics are very important. And every phrase and how the phrase has been con constructed and also the context of it. Why did Arunagiri Natha write what, what he did? And what is going on? Like, for instance, Jaya 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 Aruna Chala Shiva, something like that. Um, every line, the first line ends with the word Tirumula. Mm -hmm. So that Tirupuvar itself shows a connection or the reference to Tirum Tirumula, who lived about a thousand years before Arunagiri Natha. And it's set in Tiruvannamalai. And uh, there's so many other things associated with Tirunamalai, with the Adala Sedanarada Tirupugar, which involves Murugan coming out of the pillar and all that. So it is impossible not to talk about these stories while rehearsing. Mm. So when you actually discuss these stories and when you when you sing these songs and you when you share them with the audience and not the audience with the actual with, with the singers, and you realize that you are actually living a tradition which was not just 500 years old, but this 500 years ago. Arunagiri Nada was referring to somebody even a thousand years before that. Yeah. So I get goosebumps even when I when I think of that. When it when the audience shares the goosebumps, it becomes a very, it's more than a rehearsal. So I think sure. that is how that the spirit of singing together, the joy of singing together, and all that kind of developed over a period of time. How did the uh, the Westerners, when you approached them for this uh, choir mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. Shanti? How yeah. was their reaction when they first attended your very first or very few first few rehearsals? Uh, actually, in the first first rehearsal when we in Shanti when we rehearsed for the first time, um, I still remember it. We rehearsed a song called Gange, so it was based on a few lines from the Ganga Stotram by Adi Shankara. But the rest of it is a tarana that I wrote in Swaras. All right. It'll start with Gange, Gange. It's like calling out to the river Gange, Ganga. So it's mm. the eighth case, right? Gange, Gange. So, um, and uh, Gange is not without precedent. Gange, Maam, Pahi is the composition of Dikshitar. So um, Gange, it'll develop into a four-part harmony. So it'll start out with one set of voices and then next set will add to it. And third set will come. And finally, when the upper range voices come in, it, it's like you have... That day, we expected about 55 people in the rehearsal, but when they actually put out the chairs, they had to get about 40 more. So there were like 85 people in that rehearsal on a cold night in the church. 60 probably were from the Indian community. No, yeah, about 55 were from the Indian community. 30 were from the Martin Luther King Coalition Choral and other, other, other choirs. And they all had, I had written out the music and notation and they were like singing, looking at the word Gange for the first time. And they sang it together. It's, the it was like a pravaham, okay. So slow trickle of voices, and then suddenly it builds into this big layer. It goes like that. So um so um 
it, it was an exhilarating experience. So I was I was kind of scared as to how it would pan out because the words are not necessarily the most straightforward words. Yeah. The Indian choir had gotten used to singing them, but the Western choir was looking at it for the first time. But the feedback that I got from people was literally the Ganga flowed in the church that night. That is that is what people told me. Um, and uh, the people who came that night resolved to come back for every other rehearsal after that. And that is how it slowly started building. Then there's the Shanti Mantra, Prithvi Shanti, Antarikshakam Shanti. So while communicating it to the um, Western singers, mm. they enjoyed the, the getting the context of it more than anything else. Mm. Mm. When we say peace, it's not peace as in war and peace. It's about discovering your connectedness with all of the universe. Discovering that there is no concept of the other, other the otherizing. Garde, it's a, it's a, it's, it's something that causes division. So how do you look for that uh, uh, the nature with the nature of existence without any bedham, basically? Yeah. So and mm -hmm. when you relate to the entire universe in that state, that is what we refer to as shanti. So Abdindra, when we were exploring concepts like that, the feedback that I got from people was they came and left left the rehearsal in a very quiet kind of a space oh, right. Right. Uh, yeah and, sure. and this was both from the Indian community and also from the Western community then halfway through that at one point in time we had like a potluck or something and uh, where we broke bread together and all that and that's how uh, the relationships got built and uh, over a uh, period of time and then when everything came together with the orchestra and in front of an audience. Uh, so it is met level by level, right? First, just the Indian singers alone, then many layers get added on top of it. And finally, and the, uh, the whole thing is like a, like a Velvi, Tamil Velvi, some Sanskrit, like Yagya. It's like a Yagya. So mm -hmm. you work together for an extended period of time. You become one with it. And in the end, when you actually uh, perform it in front of people, it's it's only a celebration. It's nothing more than that. So did you really imagine or think uh, when you were doing this project that you are, in other words, you're opening up a lot of avenues, you're just bridging the gap between cultures mm. through your music? Mm. I mean, did you even happen to think that you're leading in this direction? At that time, I was not thinking because the, the only thought in my mind was I said, okay, I have this vision in my head. Mm -hmm. The vision was, okay, there are 100, 100 people singing, both Indian and non-Indian people, voices and layers, and then there's a symphony orchestra on one side, there's an Indian orchestra on the other side, there are dances in the middle, and there are visuals projected on all sides. And I, when I said that to people, they said, Pada Paiti Kara, how is it going, ever going to happen? And even when I discussed this with my wife and said 100 singers and all that, my own family said... How are you going to get 100 people? And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so it's only the craziness of the whole thing was probably the foremost thing in my he head rather than I, I did not think that this was anything uh, significant or anything at that point. Amazing, in time. amazing. I mean, it is, yeah, I'm sure it must have been a humongous uh, task to, you know, get and uh, uh, definitely all these uh, musicians, uh, oh, the definitely. community as such, isn't it? So Definitely, definitely. And there was no agenda, right? That was the main thing. Amazing, such a, yeah. a lovely, must be very, very exhilarating, and you know, even for the audience who must have uh, witnessed. Yeah. Um, yeah, because when there's energy like this, there's a certain purity, right? So when it absolutely. rubs off on the audiences, there's no question about it. The music that you compose requires a high degree of attention, concentration, mm -hmm. and a real depth of interest, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to the need for great amount of musical preparation, what mm -hmm. emphasis would you place on learning and uh, understanding the language and their roles that one sings? If you're of Indian origin, you will, with a little bit of effort, you'll be able to understand a lot of the words. Yeah. Sharat Chandrika Dhawala Prakasha Gatram. That's a line straight out of Dikshitar. But um, I had tuned it in the Raga Madhuvanti. Hmm. Sharat Gamapa Sharat Chandrika Dhawala Prakasha Gatram Kumuda Mitram Chandram Chandram Sharat so mm. either one we had sung it in Europe in uh, the Netherlands. Oh, so right. there was okay. there was a Dutch choir that sang with us. 
that's why irke english vandu kind of kind of munapina and uh, the most of the indian singers were of uh, suriname is origin who oh, regularly fine. do not sing um, it's sanskrit is not part of their vocabulary of their music per se what I mean, they do sing kirtans and things like that so this is new to them but the effort was clear the meaning was clear what we were trying to invoke in that song in 5 minutes with a kathak performance was very clear it was about the autumn it was about the autumn moon it was about the bigness of the autumn moon it was about what is possible under the autumn moon it so this was a suriname choir from the netherlands and their okay. their cultural backgrounds very interesting so these these are people that left india in the 1800s Oh. they yeah there was a big community of people taken by the british as indentured laborers to the caribbean after mm-hmm. slavery was born was banned and these people worked in the, the caribbean and in um, uh, suriname and other places and uh, when Suri, suriname passed over to dutch hands and when mm-hmm. it became independent in 1975 many people um, migrated to the netherlands oh. so there's a big pe- community of people of indian origin in um in holland in the mm. netherlands who are not really from india and many have not even been to india mm. so they are referred to as the hindustani people oh. and I, yeah they carry with them a slice of indian culture they carry with them a slice of india that we you and i don't have access to mm-hmm. because we left india in the 1900s and they left in the 1800s so the image of india the relation to india it's it's it is very different the the, the relationship to sanskrit is different mm. and then you have them and they speak dutch and they also speak english mm. and then you have the dutch choir which which was uh, the dario for choir which is one of the like a professional choir in holland mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, they their first language was dutch and of course they could communicate in english but the what is common to us was just the language of music and uh, as to how they could relate to the words they made every effort to learn the diction correctly and pull it together and it was an electric rendition so to say so um sharad chandrika i think that we and it was choreographed in the kathak dance form by two dancers from india and the audiences who had not heard that music before for the first time see see this usually there's some advantages performing in your native space because the audience knows you but anga vandu there i didn't know anybody in the audience mm, mm. but still we got a non stop standing ovation there so there is something that the that we as a choir and we as an orchestra on stage were able to project and share the energy with the audience the communication happened in a certain way that we belong to them they belong to us and that my aunt was on a work day night we had a full house standing ovation wednesday night or something like that i don't know how it happened <laughs> amazing So in the recent you have engaged young professional musicians in your mm-hmm. recent project yeah. why do you think it is important to involve young people in your projects and what do you enjoy most about working with them simple thing is you learn quite a lot <laughs> i've done a lot of work with my daughter who is a professional musician right. um yeah she got a degree in voice performance and music history and then she also went to mcgill university in canada and got a masters degree in uh, um uh, early european music hmm. so um it working with her is a different experience you just give her a song and then she will just spend so many minutes on the recording she'll just finish it in one couple of takes and go off and but again she has helped uh, em- narrate some of the stories in my programs and all that so i um the the uh uh so when i did this project on the history of yoga last mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. okay i think we had to rewind a little bit um because in 2019 was the last major show we did in 2020 january 1st was the last mm-hmm. um second last live performance before the pandemic mm-hmm. and then uh, in, when you work with choirs in the community there's a lot of people your age will come and join because it's natural because your friends come and join you um then um uh i worked with children we built children's choir choirs in cincinnati and other places with kids in middle school and high school and that's a different en- energy altogether mm. but the youth population the working youth population is a different age altogether um and uh, once the pandemic hit the people kind of 
uh, limited to Zoom rehearsals and yeah. other things. And then uh, I was actually supposed to do a show for IIT Madras. And instead, we said, okay, let's produce, produce a music video. And that's how we got in touch with Bombay Jayashree and uh, Kaushiki Chakravarti. And we uh, produced the first video called Rivers of India. Right. And, okay. Okay. And the second one with Ranjani Gayatri called uh, Monsoons, which featured the Tirukural and uh, all that. Right. And then in 2020, um, oh no, last year, no, 2021. I also wanted to ask you about your recent project, Rag Darshan. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. uh, let me, if you could tell me more about, uh, you know, how how it started and the success uh, behind that with the young oh, professionals. Oh, again, with the young professionals. So with the, before that was Yoga Darshan, the story of yoga told in 27 minutes. And mm -hmm. in that, I was really particular about having <clears throat> young singers in there because we are telling the story of yoga. We wanted wanted to get this. This is not a story. Um, this is a story where we want the youth to get interested. Absolutely. There's a lot of narratives about yoga. There's a lot of appropriation of yoga. There's a lot of appropriation of Indian ideas. And so people don't even recognize where they came from. They mm -hmm. don't care about the source of it. But if the youth could be involved in actually narrating the story musically. Mm -hmm. There'll be great, a greater sense of sense of ownership. And that is what I felt at that sure. point in time. Similarly, when I dreamed of this project called Rag Darshan, so after having written the 21 Raga Malika, the thing that stuck me was, why didn't we do a 75 Raga Malika for wow. 75 years of Indian independence? And again, same uh, inspiration, Dikshita, 75 lines each in a different Raga. The name of the raga has to come in the text in some way, shape or form, but we'll take it one level further. And it also has to be visually relatable to different aspects of Indian culture. So uh, so that, that is how the project was conceived. And then I said, okay, this has to be heard in the voices of the youth because it's this is for tomorrow. This is not for yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to all these young singers. We recorded everything in different places and then did the editing here in Cincinnati and the, finally when we assemble the videos that youth really comes out both in terms of voice and in terms of uh, the footage that you see on screen so yeah, it's a voice of an, to see the video it's amazing yeah thank you <laughs> it's 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 an emerging youthful Indian diaspora and people from Indian India as well and um, I can see I, the connection between uh, you know every song good visuals there so which yeah. people can really relate to okay, yeah amazing it, yeah Thank you. There are many levels to that. For example, when it's Amrita Varshini, uh, the visuals are from Ettayapuram. Where Dikshita caused the rain to come. So you'll see a little signboard that says Ettayapuram. How nice. In that yeah. scene. And uh, similarly, for uh, um, Chitta Ranjani, mm. Nad, um, the only well, composition that we all are familiar with is Nadat Tanumanisham, where the line Satyo Jata Di Pancha Vaktaraja Sarigama Padani Vara Saptaswara. So I show Pancha Mukha Shiva in that from Elephanta Caves. Wow. So that is how there's this visual connections in every raga actually. We could do a leg dem on the whole Raga Malika itself. Yeah, I think it would be uh, you know, very educative uh, video, particularly for the Western audience. Even mm -hmm. for the Indian Indian audience, we are moving mm. on to the second session uh, of mm. the chat, which is called the lighter side of you. How would you describe yourself in three words? Foodie, nala uh, I love tea and uh, I love stories. What's your uh, favorite holiday destination? All along, it has been uh, kind of study holidays, going to temples and um, historical sites and Andamadri. Your favorite food? Gourmet pizza. Who's your favorite composer? Yeah, on the Carnatic music side is Motis Swami Vikshita. On the Western, the Western side, I've enjoyed Mozart a lot over the years. And there's, there's a lot of other people on the popular music side. I've enjoyed Ile Raja, MS Sustanathan, A.R. Rahman, and everyone. Ah, Salil Chaudhary. What is that one change that you wish to see in the present music scenario? More awareness. So with this, we come to the end of this wonderful session. And, Thank you. Uh, it's, again, as I said, it's my I'm truly honored to have this opportunity to speak to you today. Oh, it's so kind of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, uh, Chitraji. And uh, we'll be in yes. touch. And... Sure, sure. Yeah, take care. Namaskar. Namaskar. Namaskar.